Hi there, and welcome to another edition of This Talk Live. Um, my name is Dan. I'm a data analyst at Tableau Software, and I'm here today with Ross Perez. Hey, Ross. Hey, Dan. So, what do we got? What are we looking at today? Well, this is an interesting visualization, and what it's essentially looking at is a couple of different development indicators in Africa and how they correlate to each other. Um, the the main uh, metric that's within this visualization is the cataract surgery rate for different countries in sub-Saharan Africa. Now, the map and the scatter um, the scatter chart also have um, two other development metrics as well. The scatter chart is showing us the corruption perceptions index as well, and its um, correlation to um, the cataract surgery rate. And then the map at the bottom left hand corner is also showing us the failed state index. So there are two different um, approaches to looking at development, um, and, or actually three different approaches if you include the cataract surgery rate. But as you can see, this visualization in general is just a little bit uh, cluttered and busy and difficult to read and understand. So I think that you know we just want to clean it up a little bit. Um, it's not necessarily that the data is bad, it's just that it needs to be displayed in a way that's a little bit easier to understand. Right, and presentation is of course very important. Let's get let's actually try to rework some of the presentation then. What are some of the things that you think we should take a look at? Well the first thing is, and you know, whenever you create a visualization in general, um, the thing that I try to do first is just size it at the size that I want to build it for. Regardless of the final output, you always want to create your visualization at exactly the size that you're going to end up um, kind of publishing it at. In this case, um, you know, working with the, with the space that we have, I'm, I'm going to make our, our viz 800 by 620. Um, now before, um, you'll notice that it was on automatic behavior. What that basically means is that it just sizes it to whatever the size of the visualization is, whatever the size of the screen is. Um, in this case, I just want to say that it will always be this size and make it a little bit easier for people to um, you know, see the viz exactly as I intended it to be. I also think that the borders around the legend and the filter is a little weird. Um, it just creates a bit more of a distraction than anything else. Um, and actually, I think these filters aren't particularly useful. Instead of just you know selecting a certain country, you can actually already do so. Um, and it highlights the rest of the uh, other chart types. And I think that's actually pretty more effective than selecting uh, one particular country at a given time. So I would actually get rid of both the surgery and the country filters. Um, and get rid of the border, and we can do that just by selecting the layout container and formatting that. Yeah, so I mean that that in general, just that one move gives us so much more space to work with on the dashboard and really makes this a lot easier to read just from the get-go. Now the other thing that I want to address that's really obvious um, when you see it is just the amount of text on the dashboard. I mean, you definitely always want to give people uh, an explanation of the text that you're showing them so that they can kind of understand what they're looking at and what they're seeing and what um, you know, kind of they're absorbing visually. But um, if you're putting so much text on the dashboard that you're explaining every little piece, then there's really no point to having any of the visualizations at all. Generally speaking, the text you want to be an assistant rather than something that is, is simply um, the entire viz in, in itself. To start off, let's just start with the title. The title is kind of what I always start with. And, um, you know, all this stuff, interesting, valuable to know, um, but it's all in the visualization itself. So I actually don't need to call it every single figure and cite every single fig figure in order to get a good title on this dashboard. I can just say this is corruption, or excuse me, um, development metrics in Sub-Saharan Africa. Africa. And that pretty well describes what you're seeing on the dashboard and enables the viewer to get into um, mentally into what they're going to be seeing before they see it rather than trying to contemplate every single metric at, at one time. Um, they can look at all of the visualizations in the dashboard to get a better idea of what's going on. Now the second part that I want to cover in regards to text is the titles of of these uh, of these sheets. So I'm um, actually you know I like the fact that the author called out these different things, but I feel like it's probably better 
to be, again, a little bit more descriptive and clear rather than trying to um, call every single detail. And also, I think that, um, you know, call to action is good, but in this case, it's just taking up so much space. And we can actually put that call to action in, in, in an annotation in the uh, in the map. So we can do that later. But first, um, yeah, let's just get the, in this. So this is cataract surgery compared to the failed state index. So this is, um, yeah, let me rename that. Cataract surgery rate versus the failed state index. And I'm also gonna get rid of this underlining. It just seems a little bit loud to me. And we can also make this just a little bit smaller. There's no need for dashboard titles to be enormous. You can usually accomplish what you need to with a smaller um, title. And it also helps get people into the viz a little bit faster. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly right. At the end of the day, you want people um, looking at your viz, not your titles. So, um, and then this one, we can uh, actually maybe save a little bit of time here. I'll just delete the parts I don't want here. So, we've got the corruption percentage index um, versus the failed state index. And again, we can make apply the same changes to the title here um, that we did before to make it just a little bit easier to see. And we'll left align it. Last one here, cataract surgery rate per country. I actually think that that title is great. I just wanted to make those changes to the title that I that they had in the previous um, titles. And there we go. So already, Dan, we've made the viz easier to get into, easier to read, easier to absorb, and we haven't really messed around with um, any of the orientation or um, you know, placement of any of the vizs, or even any of the analysis being done in the viz, and it's already improved significantly. Speaking of the orientation, do you feel that this, the way that the three charts are put together could be modified a little bit? The thing is that um, a lot of times when you're looking at a visualization, it can be hard to piece the different parts together on a dashboard. It can be a challenge because, um, you know, dashboards are, are usually, um, you know, you're constrained by a certain size, like I was talking to earlier. And sometimes that does, that size or that orientation or that shape doesn't work well with the visas that you're working with. In this case, though, um, we can actually make this work relatively well. The issue um, that this author was struggling with is that they have two visas that are long. Um, and when you have two long visas, they can work really well. So I'm referring to the map and, and the, um, the bar chart. When you're dealing with two long visas, they can work really well um, on a vertical dashboard. You just put one side by side. Um, and they can work really well on a horizontal dashboard as well. You put them one on top of the other. Um, in this case, though, we're, we're hamstrung because we cannot reorient the map. Obviously, the map, we want it to be pointing north. So in this case, we have to keep this one oriented how it is. However, we can fit this uh, scatter plot beneath the map um, effectively. So we can actually um, space in um, on the left-hand side that second viz. So actually you can see at the bottom right hand corner, actually just on the right hand side, we've got our bar chart. And it looks a little bit awkward. Um, it's hard to read and you can actually notice that not every one of the lines or one of the bars is actually called out. Um, so we actually have the tool tip to know which countries that we're looking at. Luckily that can be fixed easily and it's actually a best practice that you wanna be looking at your bar charts and reading them left to right, just as you naturally would um, you know, in the course of, of any other um, you know, book or or graphic or anything like that. I mean, it makes it easier to actually read what the countries are too, since yeah. they're horizontal. That's exactly right, yeah. So it's easier to read and we can actually see all of them. So it's a, a big gain just by doing that. I'm gonna also give a little bit more space to the visualizations on the left-hand side. Um, you can see that they were um, a little bit scrunched, so now we've got a little bit more space on the left-hand side. Um, before I move on, uh, there's, there's one more thing that I definitely need to do. I actually need to add an element to the dashboard and you can see that that is the the size legend. So if ever you're using size or color you always want to include the legend on your dashboard. So what I'm going to do is go down to analysis, legends, and add my size legend for cataract surgery rate. You can see sometimes you might have a little bit of trouble um, placing things on a dashboard with Tableau. The, the trick is though that you really just need to keep on kind of experimenting and trying with it and you can usually get where you need to be um, relatively quickly. It's just a matter of, of kind of trying things out and, uh, and seeing what works. So actually I'm going to resize um, again. Um, we've got these really big um, titles. Actually I think we can go one lower there. 
All right. And the last thing um, with that little piece that I'm going to do is just make sure that I can get all of these pieces um, onto the same legend. Boy, that is very stubborn. And sometimes that will happen. You'll get a stubborn legend. But you can, um, if you get run into a lot of trouble, you can use this Arrange Items um, button, which can work really well um, to help you fit everything on um, in the way that you want it to be. All right. So Dan, um, given that, and we're, we've come a long way with this visualization, but it still feels a little bit out of place. And I think that maybe um, you know the thing that, that needs a lot of help is the background colors and, and kind of the, the overall flow of the dashboard um, as colors go. I think one of the things that I would change about kind of the, the background colors is this gray is a little bit dark. Um, for the entire background of the dashboard. Uh, so we can actually just change that. We'll go to dashboard format. Um, I would choose a slightly lighter color and bump this all the way up to 100%. And what would be really good is if we could get kind of this gray that we're using to match throughout the entire dashboard. And we can just do that by right clicking the sheet itself. All right, we'll choose kind of this little shading option and we'll choose the exact same color. And we can also do this for the title itself. Let's go ahead and apply that to the rest of our sheets so that everything just kind of matches. You know, that's actually a really cool trick that not a lot of people know is that you can actually just click on another sheet and you'll stay in the same formatting menu. It's a really useful tip that um, I didn't know for a long time and actually saves a lot of time when you're working with a dashboard. Yeah. All right, so we're, we're kind of getting close to the end of where we want this dashboard to be. The last thing that I'd like to do is to change um, a little bit of this corruption perception index versus stale, st failed state index viz. Um, so a lot of times you'll notice when, when marks overlap each other like this, it's a little bit hard to see them. So in this case, um, actually, I'm just going to change this shape to a circle because that's obviously what it is. Um, and then when I do that, I can actually add a border, and the border will make it a little bit easier to differentiate the different visit, or the, excuse me, the, the different pieces on top of one another. And then I can add a little bit of transparency so I can see the ones that are floating on top of other ones. Okay, so we've taken this dashboard and gone from you know kind of a very busy and difficult to read dashboard and we've enabled it um, you know it doesn't necessarily tell a, a story but it really displays the information that's trying to display extremely well and you know that's sometimes the case you're not always going to be telling you know a perfect infographic story every time you create a visualization that's not the goal the goal should be to um, display information in a way that's easy for people to understand and gain value from. And sometimes all it takes is just taking what you've got but changing the presentation style of it a little bit. Exactly. Totally agree. Alright, well thanks for watching everyone. Uh, if you have any other suggestions for other visits to kind of just take a look at and discuss, feel free to send them to us at social at tableausoftware.com. Feel free to leave us a comment in the description below. And we'd love just to hear your thoughts. Thank you. Hey, thanks.